Hello, my front porch friend. Well, Palmer wants to drop in and say a quick hello. And you better get it quick while you got it because he's about to go roaming in the woods to see what he can find. Palmer and I are down here today walking on the old dirt road. And there's just not much I enjoy more than coming out here on a fall day and just, oh, drinking deep of all the sights and the colors and the smells and the sounds of being outside and alone with God. But I want to come to a special place today. In fact, it's a place you and I actually have never been before. And uh, there's so many places like this out here in these woods that I just find every once in a while. And uh, a few days ago, I was out here with my granddaughters and we found this little spot. Oh, it was just breathtaking. So come down here with me. I wish the camera really captured these views. Can you see the creek way there in the distance? So we've got to kind of go downhill. So come on down with me. Pray that I don't fall. And uh, we're going to do our best to get down this very steep hill. But I want to go down to this place. Oh, just look here. Look at this little stream of water. Can you see that? I don't know if you can hear it or not, but there's something soothing and wonderful about just listening to the sound of a beautiful little stream. Here, yeah, I'm trying to carry my Bible too because I have a word for somebody. Whoa, I want to share with you. Look what I found. Just look at this. Oh. Can you see that or not? That beautiful little stream of water. And then look down here. Come with me this way. Watch. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Just look at this. Just look at this. I'm trying to get us down to a little spot we can stop at. It's a little bit briary, but hopefully these few frosts that we've had lately has put the snakes to sleep. Okay, look. Oh. Can you see that view? I don't know if my phone is capturing it or not. But, oh. Uh, something about coming away from the world and all the craziness of it and the chaos of it to a place where you just feel like you're alone with God. I kind of love to call these places my secret place. Secret places with God. You can find them anywhere. That's what I want to talk to you about today. I have a word for somebody that's very significant. I want you to please listen to this word all the way to the end of it. I have a song I actually want to sing you at the end of this word that I've been hearing in my spirit for probably three days. I've been hearing this song being sung, and uh, I want you to hear it because I actually think the whole reason I've been hearing it is especially for your sake. So here comes Lily. She's joining us too. I'm gonna make this rock right here my seat and my, pul my pulpit with my Bibles. Okay, let me get over here where I can sit down. Look at Palmer, he's coming in to join us. The congregation is gathering here. <laughs> I wanna to talk to somebody today who is, the last few days, this is why I wanted to come to this place, is because the last few days to somebody that's watching right now. You have just been feeling utterly drained. That's what I heard in my spirit. Someone that has just been feeling so drained of life and, and even just strength and just, it just feels like lately you've been dealing with a, a level of exhaustion that's just beyond even the physical realm of exhaustion. You don't even know why exactly or where it's coming from. You love God. You love his presence. 
But somehow lately, you've just been feeling like, God, I love you and I love your presence, but I, I, I can't seem to find even the nearness of God. I can't find his presence that you're so desperately in need of. And but mostly lately, you've been just even saying to yourself lately, where is God? Just where is God? Well, I think I know. I think I know where he is for you and for me. And that's the word he wanted me to share. This is where he told me to tell you that you would find him. You ready? It's in Matthew chapter six and verse six. And I'm reading in the New King James Version. And it says this, but you, when you pray, go to your room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your father, who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. You've been wondering lately, where is God? You've been asking yourself lately just all the questions about why you're dealing with this sense of, of exhaustion and, and, the, and seemingly unable to find him. Well, he told me to tell you, you'll find him in the secret place. You say, well, Miss Karen, how do I get to the secret place? And maybe you don't live in a place like this that you can come out in the woods with God. Well, it doesn't take the woods to find God. The secret place is not based on a physical location. The secret in finding where God is and in the secret to finding where the secret place is, he tells us in that same verse. How do you find the secret place? You shut the door. Shut the door to wherever you are to whatever's going on in your life right now. You could be driving down the road right now in the car. You can be in, in, in the middle of a busy office. You can be in the middle of, of a place that's surrounded with people and still somehow you shut the door to the world, to their influences and to their many, many voices and distractions. Now, of course, it's best to find a place, even if you've got to get up at five o'clock in the morning to have it. It is best to find a way, literally, physically, to get alone with God. You can go to the woods if you've got woods, but you can go to a bedroom. You can go to your car. Go wherever you've got to go to shut the door. Close out people. Close out the rest of the world. Close, literally close out your mind and all these crazy, tormenting thoughts you've been having lately that's been filling you with fear. Shut the door to every other voice and every other person and every other circumstance but God. Get alone with God. Create, find a secret place. And when you find and you make a secret place for God by closing out the world, you're going to find God there. Bob Sorge, I love it. He's my dear friend. And Bob says it like this. He says, your shut door grants you instant intimacy with the Father. He said you have a guaranteed way to intimacy with the Father every day, and that is by being willing to shut the door. And I want to tell you something else, my dear friend. It is in the secret place, alone with God, that you're going to find the source of your life. Now, I want to speak to every front porch friend I have right now, every intercessor, all of us that pray together. Listen, honey, and you know this, but I'm going to remind you. Your secret place with God is the source of your survival. It's the place of our survival as men and women of prayer and faith. Some of you are believing for your prodigal to come home. You're believing for situations that are impossible. And if you don't come away and draw strength from your source of life, then those circumstances will drain you. You will be depleted of strength and peace if you don't come away with God alone, away from all of those things and just draw your life from the secret place of being with God.
You know, sometimes if you've ever been in an airplane, I'm sure you have, whenever they're kind of giving you the instructions for the, in case of an emergency. And it says if you're, you know, if they're in a place of emergency, those, um, the oxygen mask will fall. And it says if you're with a child, to be sure that you put the mask on yourself first. Why? Because for the child to be protected, you got to protect yourself first. In other words, to save your child, you're going to have to take care of you first. That's true spiritually too. Because some of you right now are battling for the deliverance of your child. You're, you're standing and contending for your children, for your marriage, for your family, for restoration. You're, you're, you are in a spiritual warfare, so to speak, where literally your very life can be drained out of you. That's why it is necessary for you to come apart with God to the very source of your life and put on your spiritual oxygen mask so to speak, by meditating on the Word of God, by being literally in the presence of God. Sometimes you don't even need to ask for a thing. You just need to sit there and say, God, you're my life. You're my source. And see, honey, your family's got to see you like this. Because your family, your children, your nieces, your nephews, your spouse, your, your, even your, your office, all the people around you, they're reeling with the craziness of this world too. Our world right now is like it's upside down and shaking. And people are looking for somebody who knows what's going on because it doesn't appear that our leaders know. People don't know where to go. So even our children in our schools and middle schools, they're in this crazy world too. But when they come home, they don't need to see a mother and a grandmother that's frazzled. They don't need to see a mother. Your spouse doesn't need to see a wife, or if you're a husband, then a, then a, a you know, you don't need to see your, your spouse all stressed out and worried. Your children don't need to see a mother that's her nerves are on end and she's snapping at everything and because she's, she's fried too. Your, your children don't need to see and your spouse doesn't need to see somebody or your family who's looking at the world going, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what we're going to do. Oh, we're just, and look like you're gripped with fear too. No, your children need to know somebody in their life. That they can say, you know what? I know the world's kind of crazy right now, but I've got this mother. She knows how to pray. Your kids need to be able to say, I've got this grandmother. I know everything's crazy right now, but my grandmother, she doesn't even seem to be worried. She's just got her Bible and she reads her Bible all the time. And she just, I, when I'm at her house, I've got peace. That's what your children need to have. They don't need to see you depressed and heavy. And you say, but Karen, if you knew what I've been going through, you'd know why I feel like this. I know sometimes life can knock you down so hard and hurt you so deep that these things are a lot easier said than done. And I would believe that, except that I've read the word. And two, I know what it feels like to just fight to be happy. There was a time in my life, especially when Lindsay was gone, my daughter, when she was a prodigal. I remember there were days, one of the strongest and the biggest battles I dealt with was just feeling so sad. Even though I was full of faith, I was fighting for faith, I was standing on my promises, but I just felt sad. And I remember thinking, and I'd never been a really sad person ever, but I remember thinking, Lord, will I ever be happy again? And some days you just fight with the hope that you can be happy again. Well, here's what I felt from the Lord to remind you of. So strong in my spirit, I wrote down this sentence for the one that was watching me right now. And this is what I heard to tell you. The source of your joy does not come from everything in your life being perfect and right. The source of your joy does not come from everything in your life being perfect and right. That's not what determines your joy. Your joy is not determined by your relationship with your spouse. Your joy is not determined by everything going perfect with your kids and everything going perfect with your extended family. 
Come on, your joy and the source of your joy is not determined by everything going right at the office and the bank account being full and, and the house being clean and everything being organized and, and everybody that you want to come for the holidays is coming. That's not the source of your joy, honey. Today, it may seem like everything in the outside world looks like it's crazy. And even as it gets closer to your life, maybe your kids are not where you want them to be. Maybe your marriage is in trouble. Maybe the financial pressure is overwhelming. It could be today in the physical battle that you're dealing with. You're just battling with this stuff in your life, but that still does not determine whether or not you have joy. Jesus said it. You got to go read it. Jesus said in John chapter 14, chapter 15, and chapter 16. Go read all three today. It's so good. Jesus said in chapter 14 of John, he said, I'm going to give you peace. And I love this. I'm going to give you peace that the world can not give you. Your peace does not come from the world being okay. The world can be crazy and you can still have peace. Jesus said, I'm going to give you joy. Look at it for yourself and read John chapter 15 and 16. He said, a joy that's going to remain in you. And I love this part of it. And the no man can take it from you. I just love that. Jesus said, I'm going to give you joy that's going to remain. It's just going to sit there all the time. It's there. It's there. I'm going to give you joy that no man, nobody, no child, no prodigal, no office, no family, no spouse, nobody can take your joy. Why? Because he is the source of your joy. He's the source of your peace. While the world's changing, he's not. While people may be blocking you on the phone and telling you, don't text me, I ain't coming home for dinner. He's not blocking you. <laughs> While people are coming and going from your life and, and things seem crazy. No, he remains. He remains in you. And he'll never leave you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll be there for the holidays. He's coming for Thanksgiving. He's coming for Christmas. He's coming. And he's the source of your life. He's the source of your peace. He's the source of your joy. People are nice. Love to have them. Hope they come. But people don't determine your joy. Perfected circumstances don't determine whether or not you're happy. And your kids and your family needs to see that in you. They need to see a God that's real because a lot of them don't even believe in God. They need to look at you and see there's something different in you. There's something consistent in you. There's something sure in you. There's something unshaken in you. That's only gonna come, honey, if you're drawing it from the secret place with God. You can't get it any other way. It won't come any other way. The only place you're going to find that kind of peace and joy is to drink every day. Come on, where's my Bible? It's to drink every day from this word right here. This is your source of hope. This is, come on, everybody watches the news every night. This is where you get your news. <laughs> this is your news broadcast. It's what God is telling you. That's your source of life. And that's what God wanted me to tell you today. Real quick. I felt like I wanted to tell you about a book. In fact, let me think I brought it out here with me. I did. Bob Sorge is my favorite author. He's my dear friend too. And he's written many books. I've never read one of his books that wasn't life-changing. But this is one of my favorites. It's called Secrets of the Secret Place. And he has revelation concerning these things we're talking about. That's just comes from the Lord. Bob said in this book, in the first chapter, in fact, I'm gonna give you a link below and tell you how you can get this book. And uh, I'll tell you about that maybe in a second. But Bob says that two friends of his, in fact, their names were Chris and Deanne Apke, were uh, praying about a situation in their life. It was a terrible financial pressure they were dealing with. And they were uh, praying and praying. So they got the kids to bed and they were up praying. And all of a sudden, while they're praying, they begin to hear an audible voice. I mean, an audible voice that began to speak to them and say out loud, this voice begins to say out loud, 
If you need help, call 911. If you need help, call 911. If you need help, call 911. And so they're in the living room praying about this financial thing because they didn't know what to do. And this voice, audible, begins to say that over and over. Well, they, they, they were both looking at each other. The book says like, what in the world is this? What is going on? And where's this voice coming from? They get up and they go out to the swim. It sounded like the voice was coming from out in the garage, turn their lights on in the garage. And of course, one of their children's toys, it was an ambulance toy, that toy ambulance that was lying there on the garage. And they picked it up and pressed the button. And when they pressed the button, the, the voice began to say, if you need help, call 911. But they knew, no, this was no accident. That was no one out here. In the dark, this ambulance starts talking. No, it was the Lord. And he was speaking to them a word that he's speaking to somebody right now watching this. If you need help in your finances, in your marriage, in your children, in your body, whatever it is, if you need help, call 911. You say, what do you mean, Karen? What is 911? Psalms 91, 1. Psalms 91, 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You need help today? Get into the secret place. Come away with God. Shut the door from the world. Come to the source of your life, the source of your joy, the source of your peace. He's going to tell you what to do about the finances. He's going to tell you how to pray for your children. He's going to give you a word to deal with this situation and you're going to find life. Oh, my friend, go right now. And I'm agreeing with you, Father, help my friend to find that place. Lord, I pray today strength to keep believing, strength to keep believing. I pray they draw it from you, Lord, strength to fight with. They will not give up. You're not going to quit praying for them. They're coming home. You're not going to stop praying. You're never giving up. I don't care what they've said to you this week. You're never giving up in Jesus name, healing for them, Lord provision in every way, the source of our life. I heard the Lord tell me to tell you this. Simple as this little statement is, everything's going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. You get with God this week. I'm going to play you a song that I recorded actually a few years ago. It's on one of my albums. I think it's on the album called I'm Still Here. I think that's the one I recorded it on. You can, if you'd like to get it. I'll tell you what, let me tell you this. If you would like this book, you can go to KarenWheaton.com, KarenWheaton.com. You can order Bob's book, Secrets of the Secret Place. And the good thing about ordering it, I mean, you could get it other places too, I'm sure. But if you order it through our ministry, 100% of the profits goes to help us reach young people for Jesus at the ramp. Okay, so Secrets of the Secret Place, KarenWheaton.com, or the link below will send you there. Also, my book is there, and also my, my music is there. And this album, I think, is called I'm Still Here. They can tell you if you call the office and get the information. I want to I sing you this song because this is the song I've been hearing for over you for days. I thought the Lord told me to play this song for you. So I'm just going to go out here in these woods and sit around while the song plays and enjoy the many views. So... You go right now and let this song minister peace to you as you come away and come aside to the secret place. You're going to meet God there. I love you, my friend. Comment below and let me hear from you. Will you do that? I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Listen to the song.
Oh, 